Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. So, it is Sunday. I'm a little late on my Saturday videos, but I do have a long weekend, so for me, I don't feel bad. I still got time. I'm going to try and tackle something today that is a frustrating, uh, frustrating subject for those trying to find parts, for those who incorrectly identify their saws, and for those of us who are trying to help you find the right parts, but you've misidentified your saw. So, getting that out of the way, I have lined up on the floor here three specimens that cover the whole kit and caboodle. So, I tried to come up with a neat way to put them on the workbench. I don't have enough room. I don't have enough of a vantage point with the camera that wouldn't have me in the way. So, we're going to do this my way, which is not not the best way freely admit that but it's the best way that I know how so we are talking about the Super XL and XL 12 chainsaws and if I had a dime for every time I'm getting the flashing light warning me the battery is low on this because well yeah I had a dime for every time that somebody said, I have a Super XL 12, well, I'd be rich. Especially if I had a quarter for every time they didn't have a Super XL 12. So, because I'm still plugged in here, this is getting difficult. Nothing ever goes smooth. So, there they are. All three of them, on the left. There's a Super XL. Okay. On the right, that's an XL12. And in the middle is a Super XL12. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, if your saw doesn't look like that, you do not have a Super XL12. Straight up, you don't. So, how do you know? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. I'm going to show you what the differences are. And hopefully, this video will be a good reference to prevent misidentification. If you have a red XL12, it's not a Super. It's not a Super XL12. If you have a red Super XL, it's a Super XL. Done. Do not add the 12 on there. You will confuse whoever is trying to help you find parts. Very simple. So let me get this camera remounted, and we'll go through these one by one. And we're going to go through this in the basic order that these would have been built. Now, these saws range in years. Uh, I don't honestly know if this XL12 was built before that Super XL12, but it doesn't matter. We're going to go through what makes an XL12 an XL12. The most obvious thing is it only has a manual oiler. That's it. The engine is smaller. It's a 54cc, a one and three quarter inch bore. Whoop. Sorry about that. Get this back out where it belongs. Some physical characteristics. The handlebar bracket is shaped differently. It is less, it is sloped that way a little bit more because there's no oil tank there. So the shape is different. I don't know if I have, yeah, these are, these are XL12 brackets. The Super XL bracket is going to sit up more because it has to move back on that oil tank. Don't have a good comparison here just yet. On your tag, if it's still there on these old style, it'll simply say XL12. Where's your oil tank located? Down here. The back half of the fuel tank is actually the oil tank. If your fill is down here, it's an XL12. 
Now it could be an XO15, but we're talking about the direct drive saws, the common ones, and how to identify them. Now this is an older one because it has this old TJ8 style spark plug. That's why it's got that flat, that style right there. Very common for the old XL12s to have this style of stack muffler, but that doesn't mean anything. You can't rely on that alone. You can tell that this is an old one because it has the Wix style filter. If you've got this large style hose with a copper line heading down, that's the Wix style filter. Looking over here, not a lot of dead giveaways. But up front, there sure is. There's no oil fill, there's no oil tank here. Okay, so this is an XL12. The internals of the engine, again, uh, the piston size is smaller, so the cylinder is smaller bore. The uh, bearing arrangement for the, the main bearings is different on the crankshaft side. It's just a regular uh, needle bearing and you have thrust bearings on either side of the crankshaft. So on an XL12 you can actually get this drive case off without disassembling the entire saw. The other ones you cannot do that. The Supers you can't. Super XL you can't do that. You guys know that has a ball bearing that's actually retained in there by screws. You've got to disassemble the rest of the engine, get the piston rod all of that out of the way before you can get that apart. Not on an XL12. So, recap, XL12, you have no oil fill up here, handlebar and bracket are a little bit different, a lot of interior engine components are different. Super XL12, this one has really good paint, so it's really easy to see that, that logo. That helps. Most of these saws aren't going to be in this good a condition. Super XL12 has the same handlebar arrangement. There's no tank up here. No oil fill up here. If you're lucky enough to still have a tag, it's going to say Super XL12. Oil fill is still down here. Now this one, if it was ever that older style spark plug that's been converted, which is probably the case, uh, this has the optional shield on it. Those were commonly found on the supers. Don't ask me why, I don't know. I think I repainted this muffler. That looks too clean to be an original but you can see it has that large fuel hose with the copper pipe dive and this also has a wick system on it you can see on the side this decal is also in excellent shape identifying it as a super XL12 so really this is an upgraded piston and cylinder. This has the 1 and 13 sixteenths piston in it with the corresponding cylinder but basically the XO12 paraphernalia. Now I cannot remember if this crankshaft is retained uh, with a ball bearing or not. I honestly cannot remember. But they didn't make this for long, sixty mid-64 to mid-65, if I'm remembering correctly. So there's not very many out there. And that's why I said, odds are really good you don't have a Super XL12. I can't resist, there's a little bit of the blue paint left on this old hard-nosed bar. Pretty cool. Here is a Super XL automatic. 
lots of times shortened to a Super XL. In these blue saws, that can get you in trouble because there was a version, a very early version, that I can't get to in my attic right now. It's too buried. There's a version where the oil tank is up here, but it's manual oiler only because this, instead of being a threaded fitting for the automatic pickup, is just an aluminum staked plug. I've got a really old video, uh, Uncommon Super XL. It's not an automatic. Again, that was something that was made in roughly 1967. After that, if it says Super XL, it's going to be an automatic. So they look the same, but again, this is this mounting point is set back further. So this bracket is shaped differently and therefore it has a different handle because this has to be drilled at a different angle. They don't interchange. This one again, lucky to have the tag. Super XL. And this one, you can tell it's an AO or an automatic because they stamped a suffix over there. AO. This one does not have the manual oiler up until I want to say the mid 70s that was not standard you had to add that to an automatic saw if you were going to to have that so it does not have that extra oil line they installed the inner one just not the outer one so this has the bigger muffler this saw I want to say is a 1969 or 1970 so it's a little bit newer than those other ones but very clearly labeled an automatic over here and you, again, we have our oil fill up front. We have a threaded fitting right there. If you see a slot, that means that's the automatic oil pump pickup hose and fitting. If it's a staked in plug, or just a plug that's smashed in there, it's not an automatic oiler. So again, differences, this has the larger engine it's a 58 cc 1 and 3 si 13 16 inch bore 13 16 I'll repeat it since I stuttered on it there uh, same rod but this has the captured roller bearing on the drive case side so you've got to disassemble pretty much everything else before you can possibly get the the crankshaft and that bearing out of this drive case. You cannot unscrew the screws behind the clutch and pull this off with the engine assembled. On a Super, you cannot do that. You just can't. So, we've looked at three examples that are fairly close to the same age all within, I'm going to say, five years of each other, in all likelihood. So why is that a big deal? We already talked about some of it. It's not just the pet peeve, which I'll be honest, it is a pet peeve of mine when, uh, when someone has a Super XL and they call it a Super XL 12, or vice versa, because it is so hard to match up the right parts if you don't know what you're working with. Uh, again, engine size, it's critical, utterly critical for in, internal, you know, the piston, the cylinder, the piston rings, what bearings, what crankshaft it has. I mean, it's just different. You know, the drive case, obviously different. The handle bracket, the handle. I might be just about running out of things that are different there. But that's a lot of differences. You know, so I would encourage owners of these saws, be as accurate as you possibly can when you're, when you're trying to ask for parts. And if you don't know what you have, uh, whether you're sending them to my email, posting them on House of Home Light, Arbor Site, one of those, those are the areas you want to look at. You want to look at the oil tank setup. Where the hell do you fill the oil? 
because that tells you an awful lot right there. You can get really close just by where you fill the oil. Now, if it's one of those oddball models like an XL15, that's a gear drive. You're going to see that, that assembly on the, uh, the clutch cover. You know, it's, it's going to be obvious that it's a gear drive. Even if all the paint is worn off, it's going to be really obvious that you have something different there. Uh, if your saw is newer than 19, let's say for safety's sake, newer than 1967, just to 68 and on, these goofy one-offs, you know, the, the one-year models, they were pretty much done by then in this chassis. They'd moved on to the XL101 family and were, were producing all the variations that we saw there. What carried on the legacy for nearly, well, nearly 35 years after that would be the XL12 and the Super XL Automatic. And again, a lot of us, myself included, we abbreviate that Super XL Automatic just down to a Super XL. Because after, from 68 on, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't, the, adding the Automatic on there doesn't matter. There's not a separate model that's, that's buried in there somewhere. So, XL12, Super XL, Super XL Automatic, Super XL12, mm-mm. <laughs> Not unless you've got one of those blue saws, like I showed you earlier, that has the super on it. Either you can read it, or you've torn it down, and it has an original piston and cylinder that's 1 and 13 16 bore. Not to say that somebody didn't take an XL12 and slap a Super XL automatic cylinder on it along the way, because I'm sure plenty of people did. You know, you can add 4 cc's. Are you going to feel that in the wood? I don't think so. I doubt it. I don't know. Whatever. People can do whatever they want. They can have some fun with it. But for identification purposes, for ordering parts, it's helpful to know what you have. So I'm going to finish this video the way I started it. Unless you've got a blue saw like that, don't assume that you have an X, a Super XL12 because you most likely don't. I would say 99% of the time you don't. You've got a Super XL automatic or you have an XL12. And if you're still confused after watching this video, I've got so many resources on my website. IPLs from 1963 all the way up to what was being used in 96, 97, 98 that can help you identify it. And lots of pictures. Look in my section of my website that has my personal collection. It's in the drop-down menu. All these saws are pictured there, and you can compare. I've got shots of every angle of saws in my collection. You can compare what you have and probably get pretty close. So, hope this video helps. Hopes it avoids some confusion for guys like me trying to get, you know, folks like you parts and vice versa, because it can get confusing. We'll catch you on the next one.